discuss more about this, the former ASU president, Professor Biodun Oguyemi, joins us live from our Abuja studios. A pleasure having you with us, Professor Oguyemi. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Good now afternoon, what, Nigerians. Now, what does this particular protest intend to achieve? Because we've almost lost count on protests of this nature, all in a bid to convince the federal government to act. So what's different about this? Yes, this line of action uh, was fostered on the labor movement. And when we say the labor movement, we are talking of the NLC, the affiliate unions, and other progressive forces and elements in the society. Uh, we, there are two dimensions of this action. The first one is to, to sensitize Nigerians to the implication of what is going on for the quality of education in the country. And of course, to show them that while their children, the children of the poor, the children of the voiceless are back home, I do, the children of the elite, the ruling class, they are there attending elite schools, home and abroad. And uh, the second implication is that Nigerians are beginning to find their collective voice as uh, what we call critical, critical consciousness is dawning on us. We are moving to that stage that Franz Fanon called uh, critical consciousness that can lead to catharsis, collective catharsis. And wh what do we mean? Those who are oppressing us, those who are imposing their values and forces on us, they need to be warned, they need to be careful because people's patience is being overtasked. And it could get to a point that the masses will begin to revolt. That is what Franz Fanon calls a collective catharsis. Now, we have three dimensions of the problems we are having in this country. There is the psychological violence that they are unleashing on us. You see the way they parade themselves. They disregard us while majority of uh, Nigerians are languishing in poverty, they flaunt wealth. The other day, an assembly, a national assembly person was eager to prove that he was not earning beyond 600,000. But nobody cared to ask him how much allowance was he controlling every month, certainly in the tens of millions. So if somebody earns 6,000 basic salary and uh, has over 10,000, I mean, over 10 million attached to his office. Uh, can we actually say that person is earning 600,000? So Ask the state governors, what do they do with the humongous security votes? They are getting security votes, scandalous security votes that they don't account for. So, but Professor, they maybe... still pretend that there's no fund. Okay. They still pretend that they cannot fund education. And okay. we see the dimension of structural violence coming okay. out of that you find that gradually we are killing the education of the poor while we are focusing more attention on privatization of education, commercialization of education. And that means more education for the children of the rich and less for the children of the poor. In so the third place, we also have physical violence that is coming about us now. We are all being enveloped, more or less, by insecurity. What okay. is causing all of this? Because we don't prioritize education, the level of enlightenment that is supposed to drive our economy, drive our security, drive corruption, is not there. And so we are killing this nation gradually. Prof, Academics if I may come in. and the labor movement in general, they are to oh. serve as the, as the vanguard for the society. And until they do what is expected of them, we cannot transform this society. We cannot secure this society. We cannot uh, get the voice of the voiceless heart. That okay. is the implication of what is going on. That is why we need it. Okay, Professor Oguyemi. So the protest ends tomorrow, and the NLC president, Ayuba Waba, says the next line of action is a three-day warning strike. But if the government refuses to budge, what next? Well, the situation will be reviewed, and the NLC president has hinted at the possibility of escalating the process. You see, many places where we have revolution, the, the revolution starts by seamless protests. 
And if the ruling class, if they are not, if they are not conscious of the implication of what is going on, and they start the necessary engagement, that can halt the escalation of this process. Nobody can, nobody can tell the end. Work has lingered for way too long. Five months, the children have been at home frustrated. What's the way forward, at least putting the students into consideration? Well, the students do not live in isolation. They live in a society. They live in a society where the oppressors keep oppressing the oppressed. They live in a society where the quality of education is sliding. They live in a society where the ruling class are indifferent to genuine demands. What is required is simple. Engagement that is honest. Let government come to the realization that they cannot do this for too long. Otherwise, the process can consume them. That is just what is, that is the reality. And we want to warn our ruling class in whichever group or, or party they are. They are not different because even those who are promising us that they did this, they did that when, when okay. they were in government. When we look at their records, they are not different from those that are there. So we are, we, nobody can assure them that if anybody comes up and you still don't do what is expected of you in order to salvage, to protect, and to improve what is due to the children of the poor, to, the, to, to, what, to address what is due to those who are the intellectual uh, intellectual vanguards, those who are okay. working to elevate the society to bring about innovation okay. and, uh, and production. We Thank cannot so have much. the society that we want. And that is why critical engagement is what is required and honest engagement too. Former president of ASU, Professor Biodo Oguyemi, a pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you for having me.